So I know a lot of people have probably been wondering, how does the highest Irish pub in the world get all of their Guinness? Well, the answer is Guinness donkeys. You see this herd of donkeys behind me? They each have two kegs of Guinness strapped to their back. And let me tell you, your effort does not go unnoticed. Morning. Slept pretty well. I mean, the first like hour of going to bed, I kept on trying to catch my breath, but your body finally gets used to it. And look at the visibility. That is majestic. Today, I think the plan is to hike up to a hotel called Everest View Hotel, where we'll get our first glimpse of the big one and just get to know the crew better. We don't want to push ourselves. You know, we all fit, but take it easy today. This is all about acclimatization. Happy days? Okay, lead the group in my brother. Woohoo! This is the best visibility we've had all trip. It might snow tomorrow, so let's get some scenic shots. Going up an elevation too quickly can result in altitude sickness, so this would be our first acclimatization day, where we'd be hiking up to an elevation of almost 13,000 feet, then descending back down to our original elevation to sleep, giving our body time to adjust to the lower oxygen levels. Never been better. I don't even need poles today. I'm going to break those out tomorrow. Oh shit. Great. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Helicopter. Oh, that's electric power. Dude, this guy's a little Tony Stack. Dude's just making machines up here. It's crazy how fast your body can adapt. I couldn't catch my breath last night. Now I'm doing okay on these steps. Yeah, how are we feeling? Oh, great. Yeah, I I'm feel actually good. surprised. I, being a sea level for two years, I was... I'm getting like a, a tingling sensation in my fingers, which is the exact same uh, sensation I felt after taking the mad honey. <laughs> I just started to feel some tingling sensation. <laughs> See, you acclimatized with the mad honey. Yeah. So that was great. <laughs> or the mad honey just stays in your system a lot longer yeah. than we thought. <laughs> and now I have permanent circulation problems. All right, time to do a, a Stella Blue ad read. On a big trek, you need a big boost, which is why I drink Stella Blue Coffee, AKA Mountain Juice. Go to StellaBlueCoffee.com and use promo code EVEREST for 10% off your next order. Our first stop on the trek was the visitor center of an organization called Saga Martha Next, which promotes the cleanup of waste in the Everest region. Now, what we do here is we invite artists from the whole world. They come for a month's residency, they make artwork out of the waste and we sell it and the money we support the organization to implement a handling system for the whole region to take care of waste proper. So for the next few minutes or 20 minutes, half an hour, you're most welcome. Come in, check it out for yourself. Not only did the visitor center have a gallery exhibiting all the artwork made from trash found on the mountains, it also had a VR set in which you can summit Everest and Two minutes? Four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> oh, yep, it's starting. It looks cold in face camera. Oh, now we're at the ice falls. I'm at the Kumbu Glacier. What's this? Camp one? Oh, and there's the sun. Summoning? I'm, I'm about to. Guys, this is gonna be very easy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned. <laughs> All right, cool. Climbed Everest. I was the first barstool blogger to virtually climb Everest, but now it was time to sit down with someone trying to accomplish a feat almost as impressive, being the first Native American to physically climb Everest. Now you are from South Dakota. Correct. Uh, what Native American tribe are you? So my mother is Lakota Sioux. Uh, I'm an enrolled member of the Cheyenne River Sioux tribe and my father is a Cinnaboyan from Northern Montana. My parents feel very comfortable knowing you're on this trip because you also um, are a trauma surgeon. 
Yeah, if anything happens, I got you covered, man. So say if like my pinky finger starts to turn black. I think we just got to amputate, but you can use four fingers to pretty much do whatever yeah, is necessary yeah, yeah. for. And the pinky really is not the one that's really needed. The, you know, the thumb is really where the money's at. Yeah, nobody wants a black thumb, then you're really screwed. Can I get a quick rundown of your climbing resume? Done Rainier, been down to Ecuador, Cotopaxi, Chimborazo, been to Colorado, Wyoming, pretty much you know, climbing 14ers and stuff like that. Um, went to Kilimanjaro, been to Alaska, climbed Denali last summer. Unfortunately, weather was a difficult issue. We had to turn about, you know, 1,200,000 feet from the summit and, and head back down, but certainly we'll, we'll go back. Um, and just pumped to be here in the Himalayas for the first time. Now, were you aware of Barstool Sports before you found out that I was gonna be joining you on the expedition, at least up to base camp? If you're in America, I think everybody is aware of Barstool Sports. So when I found out that you guys were coming, man, I was pumped. And yeah. not just to be able to meet you, uh, but to spend time together, develop relationships. This is really one of the things that I love about mountaineering is the relationships that you develop, the people that you get to meet, um, because it takes a certain type of person to, to come out here and attempt what we're trying to do. Well, hey, I'm excited to get to know you on this trip as well. Yeah. We still got a long ways to go. Absolutely. You more so than me, but <laughs> let's get it. I have Absolutely, I man. have the utmost faith in you. I, I think appreciate I'm it. just gonna start saying this is the first Native American to summit Everest. Let's do it, man. Yeah, let's go. Jacob was right. It does take a certain type of person to want to climb Everest. And it seemed like everyone in our group had a very cool backstory. Okay, I'm here with Cecilina Gracie. Yes. And you are part of a UFC dynasty, the UFC dynasty. Yeah. Was it your grandfather who started the UFC? My grandfather started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay. And my uncle started the UFC. Wow. Yeah, so we're trading the mats yeah. for the mountains today. White belt mentality, you know, humble. And all we gotta do is show up. I mean, all I have to do is show up. You eventually are gonna have to summit Everest. <laughs> That's going to be tough, but I'm sure jujitsu training prepares you to kind of fight through tough times. Yes, but the white belt mentality also reminds you that a new undertaking requires new skills, so I prepared for this as well. Well, you already have a leg up on me, the whole not drinking and not doing caffeine. <laughs> that will help. Do you still fight competitively? I don't, I just teach now. And she was nice enough to teach me how to choke someone out by choking me out. So you always want the elbow right under the chin. So even with one arm, you start pressing already, all right? So then you wrap it. Oh. And it's just like a quick. You look so peaceful while you do it. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That was the first law, that was okay, right? Yeah, 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 that was good. <laughs> it's a nice little head rush. <laughs> and to top it off, she's also co-hosting a Netflix show with Prince Harry on Netflix that premieres July 3rd. <laughs> My fiance's gonna be mad because it, it kind of just looks like she's hugging me. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Luke, an aspiring astronaut who was friends with Richard Branson. How did you first meet the Bransons? Through Virgin Galactic. Oh, okay. Um, so I, uh... Signed up for Virgin Galactic and became an astronaut. Wow. A, uh, a future astronaut is probably a better way to describe it. Yeah. And then the team said there's an opportunity to go to Necker Island. You go there with other future astronauts, get to know each other. Is that the island that he owns down there? Yeah. It's right okay. There. Oh. Oh yeah, so that's his like main home base. That's home base. Luke wouldn't be going to space until the end of the year. It's gonna be fun, a fun journey to be on. Yeah, that's and gonna be space incredible. Tourism. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the thing. But in the meantime, he planned to get as close to it as possible without leaving Earth by summoning Everest and raising money for the Kids Cancer Center at Sydney's Children's Hospital in the process. So you've actually been to the base camp before, right? I have been to base camp and, and camp one, camp two. That was the mission that was last year, the, the documenting the Finding Michael oh, uh, yeah, Disney, yep. Disney Plus show. Yep. So we had a huge group of people there. And your first time at the base camp, were you guys planning on going to the top? Absolutely. And, th and then did the weather throw a wrench in those plans? It threw a couple of wrenches. I actually got sick, I got pneumonia. Oh. So I threw another wrench in my plan, which was sad, so hence back again. Yeah. Um, Pneumonia's got to be a, a, a rough one to have up there just because it affects the lungs. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. 
Anyway, this, uh, I learned a lot, which was good. Uh, a lot of people would have several several attempts, so yeah. I'm one of them. Then there was a local climber named Puru Shatam. Were you born in Lukla? Lukla, yeah. All right, cool. But I live in Kathmandu. Yes. And my duty is also in Kathmandu. Yeah, that's, that's where your job is? Yeah, job. Who was hoping to become the first Nepali police officer to summit Everest. I'm so excited. No. And everyone hopes to me and will blazing me. Yeah. As the first Polish person is going to top of the mountain and in people personal also going to top of the mountain, that's why. Yeah. I'm so excited and I have to do, I should do. Yeah, well, hey, I have complete faith that you will do it. Thank you very much. Oh, and I should probably mention NFL legend Ilya Kovalchuk's wife Nicole was in our crew too. Do your children play hockey too? No. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. Dad didn't force them? Yeah. Like uh, basketball. Soccer and basketball, yep. Nice. Yeah. nice. She was attempting to do the seven summits, which is climbing the tallest mountain on every continent. And this Mount Everest will be your fourth or fifth? Four. Four. And had already climbed the tallest mountains in South America, Europe, and Africa. So if this trip up Everest was successful, she'd only have three more to go. Will the last three be easier? Uh, I'm going to Antarctica December. Yes. And uh, this summer I'm going with Asma uh, from Princess Qatar. I'm going with her to Australia. Okay. It's a small mountain, yeah, so, but from Seven Summit. And the next year, Denali, and that's it. There were other equally impressive people in our group too, but we'll get to know them in future episodes. Just made it to Hotel Everest View, where hopefully we'll be getting our first look at Big Ev, the double summit dawn. So which one is supposed to be Everest? I've heard it. It's All complete. <laughs> yeah. It's hidden behind the clouds. <laughs> but those clouds, the ones like in between that and that? In between that big one and Amadabla in the middle. Okay. Now when we arrived, the visibility was a little better. Still couldn't see Everest. Now you definitely can't see Everest, but it is directly over there. Big Ev is behind the mist. While Everest View Hotel didn't have much of an Everest view that day, it did have the best fried rice I've had in my life. That is so good. Every time I try to make fried rice at home, I cannot make it this good. Next up, we're hiking down to a village, and then we're gonna loop back around to Namcha Bazaar and see if the Irish pub finally got their Guinness. Do you guys have Guinness? Oh, sorry, right like our Guinness has no whiskey still. Welcome today. Oh, we got a gigantic playground. Recess! Pass to me. Ah. Oh, jeez. Ha, huh, well, how's it going? I'm on recess monitor duty today. NIMS established the NIMS Dive Foundation as a means to give back to the mountain communities of its homeland. Does anybody want a blue one? Thank you. And one of their initiatives is raising money for Himalayan schools, such as the one we were at now. This would be a cool place to go to school. Who's the cowboy looking guy up there? Is he the founder of the school? Oh, it's Sir Edmund Hillary. Isn't he like one of the world's most famous climbers? Or something? First man to climb Everest. Okay, yes. I knew I had heard that name before. The school was founded by the first person to summit Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary. And he was alive till 2008. Jeez. The Lukla airport is named after him. Damn, imagine having an airport named after you in a foreign country. Uh, that does not happen a lot. You're not gonna find like a JFK airport in like a country outside of the US. And he was pretty impressive. We then began the hike back down to Namcha Bazaar. Hey bud, how's it going? Are you protecting the trail? I thought Yaks got the right away. I was gonna move for you. Very 
Namaste. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> we have seen Sherpas carrying the craziest things up here. You want to carry one of those down, Jacob? Yeah, man, I would do it. Can I try? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. There we go. This is good. Do you want to come with? Training for Everest, baby. Here we go. Nims, don't be mad. No, this is solid training. I think Nims would actually appreciate this. You know the problem with this right here, this carrying method? Yeah. That it puts a lot of stress on your cervical spine. And so like, all along here, it's diff. It would be difficult. <laughs> yeah, and that's like one of the easier loads. We arrived back at our guest house at the perfect moment. Just in time for a light shower. After an hour of torrential downpours, the sun finally peeked back out and I headed into town to take in the sights. Oh! Just stepped directly in that yak shit. Hey, how are you? Welcome to Namcha Bazaar, a little slice of paradise in the middle of the Himalayas. Anything you need before you begin the trek up to the summit of Everest, this place has it. The bustling town of Namcha Bazaar is the primary trading center for the local Sherpa community, as well as the region's most popular tourist hub, with almost every trekker making a stop there on their way up to base camp, as it's the last place to load up on supplies and hit up an ATM. I don't think any place is past this point except card, so it's definitely good to stock up on cash. It's also the only place in the Everest region with a vibrant nightlife. The Hungry Yak world's highest live music bar. This place looks like it pops off. Did I mention this place has a pool hall? Come on in, let's check it out. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Welcome, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the spot. Sig's inside. I'm very tempted to rip a cigarette just because everyone else is. One cigarette wouldn't hurt, right? Right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna put this out. Oh, wow. How do you play this game? There's a bunch of reds and then a blue. I might not know the rules of snooker. That's a lot of reds. Namcha Bazaar is also the only place around with a plethora of dining options. And here is Tomodachi, the Japanese restaurant I was telling you about. I'm gonna go check out the menu because this might be the spot for dinner. I could use some Japanese food. They do have sushi. Yeah? yeah? You do? That, yeah, you gotta be the only place around here that has sushi. That's awesome. Okay, great, I will, I will tell my friends. Who'd have thunk you could get sushi in the middle of the Himalayas? If I end up ruining my whole trip because of like, a bad piece of sushi in the Himalayas, but I don't know, they have streams. Maybe it was a stream salmon. Okay, we once again have another donkey jam. Sorry. No, it's fine. Thank All you. Right. Here I come, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Did you guys bring the Guinness up? Are these the Guinness donkeys or are these the Jameson donkeys? Oh yeah, these actually are, these actually are the Guinness donkeys because these are kegs. And they're outside of the Irish pub. So I know a lot of people have probably been wondering, how does the highest Irish pub in the world get all of their Guinness? Well, the answer is Guinness donkeys. You see this herd of donkeys behind me? They each have two kegs of Guinness strapped to their back. And let me tell you, your effort does not go unnoticed. You guys are true donkeys of genius. Nepalese heroes. The Guinness donkeys have arrived. <laughs> Nepalese heroes. Nepalese heroes, man. I mean, I, I've tried to carry a keg up like two flights of stairs and I am completely winded. Yesterday, the Irish pub had told me their Guinness hadn't arrived yet. But now that the Guinea donks were parked outside, I was excited to knock back a pint of the black stuff. Yes. Could I get a pint of 
playing a Guinness? Guinness, well, I'm sorry, like I'm out of Guinness right now. Oh, okay, I thought, I thought the donkeys had brought the Guinness. No, it's, uh, it's a Sherpa beer. So oh, Sherpa. the donkeys were carrying Sherpa beer. Yes, exactly. Do you have any Jameson? Yes. Oh, the Jameson has arrived. I will just do um, one shot of Jameson. So do donkeys usually carry up all, like all the beer here? Yes, exactly. And sometimes people too. And yeah. if we get uh, really lucky, then we get the chopper directly from the Kanmandu. Ah, uh, yes. But you can't rely on that. Are there times when you do have Guinness here? Oh, uh, yes. We used to sell before the COVID-19. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it, uh, that was probably hard on business for a while. Yeah. yeah. And getting a piece of oh, sorry, Guinness here or two years is like very hot this is Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, cheers. Cilantro. Cilantro. Okay. As it turned out, those were not the Guinness donkeys. Those were the Sherpa donkeys. Not just because they were literally being Sherpas, they were carrying Sherpa beer. Sherpa beer is a mighty fine beer, but I was craving a Guinness. Apparently it has a lot of like vitamins and minerals that are good for the body. Um, so I was just going in there for nutritional reasons. I'm not just gonna start sucking down beers for the sake of sucking down beers. I wanted a nice filling, creamy Guinness. Uh, and today's not the day for that. He said they serve Guinness here up until COVID-19 that was hard on business. Now it's really tough to get a pint of the black stuff in Knob Shea Bazaar. But they did have Jameson, so I ripped the shot. And um, yeah, I mean, they've got a full bar, a full menu, great tunes. They got um, some Hurleys on the wall, uh, which is what you use when you're playing the Irish sport of curling. Is it hurling? No, that's what you play when you play the Irish sport of hurling. And um, like famous musicians, photos of them all over the wall. It's honestly a great vibe, but no, you will not find a pint of Guinness. The Jameson shot hit me hard at that elevation, so after dinner I headed to bed. And if you're wondering, no, I did not have the balls to eat Himalayan sushi. Just got a pasta carbonara at a place in town. Listen, it would have been hilarious if I ruined my entire trip over one piece of raw salmon, but it would also be pretty cool to make it to Everest Base Camp. So I, I weighed out the pros and cons. I didn't think it was worth the bit.